Hi there, everyone. Happy Empathy Day. Uh, my name is Elle McNichol. I'm the author of A Kind of Spark, uh, Show Us Who You Are, and Like a Charm. And I'm really happy to be here to talk to you with another amazing author on Empathy Day. And today we're doing the Empathy Superpower Challenge. Ooh. So yeah, uh, I am Tom Percival. Uh, I'm the author of The Invisible and The River and the Big Bright Feeling series. Uh, yes, and so our Empathy Superpower Challenge is called Human Discoveries, which basically just means finding out about each other by asking questions, which is something that Al and I are going to be doing now. We've got lots of questions prepared for each other and we're going to be using those questions to learn a bit more about the other person uh, and we're really glad that you can join us. Okay, I'm just going to grab a random question and I'm going to ask you. Oh, okay, so first of all, I want to apologise for the jagged edges of my question. Um, but the first question that I have for Tom is uh, something that made you feel happy. So something that made you feel happy. Uh, something that made me feel happy was getting a dog. Uh, we, not long ago, uh, well actually, I don't know, getting on for two years now, but in the grand scheme of my life, that's not very long ago, uh, uh, we, we got a sort of collie whippet cross, uh, and I, when I was a kid, I was quite scared of dogs, uh, and then as I got older, I was a bit just kind of ambivalent towards dogs, and my partner had always, always wanted a dog, and I was like, oh no, I can't cope with taking a dog for walks and all of that, and then we got a dog, and it was just the best thing and I started going running loads and got into running and yeah I just I love having a dog and it makes me really happy. She's full of empathy, she's yeah. full of joy and love and warmth. Yeah I think dogs are amazing. Cool. Yeah. Right, shall I keep going? Ooh. Yeah. Well, oh well no no I feel I feel like maybe maybe I maybe we should we do it like that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I reckon otherwise it'll just be like I'll feel like I'm going oh <laughs> and a bit more about me. So I've got my uh, questions in this stylish sports sock. Okay, cool. Right, so, hmm, all right. I would like to hear about something that you found hard. Oh gosh, we could be here for a long time. <laughs> I find something hard uh, every day, but I find travel hard. I find travel really, really hard. And that's because, you know, being autistic uh, means that everything is very loud and very bright. And so when you're on an underground train and it's screeching very, very powerfully and there's people pressed right up against you, uh, nobody really enjoys that. I, I've never met anyone that likes the London Underground <laughs> that much. But when you're autistic, it's a lot. And um, travel is very, very hard. And I get, again, when I'm coming to see you guys at schools or I'm coming to see you at a big festival, I'm so excited and I really want to be there. But sometimes the prospect of, you know, a two hour train ride can be really scary. And um, sometimes you have the urge to go and hide in the flat and not leave. So. Um, travel is very very scary for me um so yeah i think that's why i find hard is is, is travel I, I don't mind speaking in front of hundreds of you i've got used to that now and i enjoy it i love meeting other authors i love doing events i love doing festivals but i find getting to these places quite hard and i sometimes felt a little bit ashamed of that because i would look around at other people who are just reading their books or scrolling on their phone and i thought none of these people look like they want to be very sick which is how i feel when i'm on a train so i must be the one that's that's really really silly but um yeah i, I find travel very hard um it, you know in a sensory way um so yeah that's probably my answer um yeah <laughs> well it felt quite vulnerable saying that yeah, no i mean but i think that's that again is like that's kind of part of this process isn't it it's like if you you know if we can openly and honestly communicate with each other and i don't mean you and me i mean like we as all in, of us as a whole then yeah you know then then we we realize we are all vulnerable we are all you know and, and if we can be kind to people in those times and as you say kind to yourself then yeah you know connections human connections are going to improve definitely yeah and there's nothing better than when you do feel a bit vulnerable about something you do feel like you know a bit a, a bit silly about something when people are empathetic and they go oh no of course you're right to feel that way yes yeah. i understand that i get that so yeah the more we can do that for each other you guys the better and then maybe i won't be i think a lot of the reason i'm scared of travel is because i'm scared of what other people will think sometimes if they see me having a bit of a panic so if everyone mm. is more empathetic then we have less of that fear i think so yeah tom's right my next question for tom which i'm actually pulling out of a shoe but you can't see is um your proudest moment. So what was your proudest moment, Tom? You must have lots because your books are fantastic, but oh, what thank was you. your proudest moment? Um, the band that I was in had some uh, records released on a Scottish record label called Lost Map, which is um, based up on the Isle of Isle of Egg. 
Um, oh. And I had wanted to have like some songs released since I was like 16. So, you know, like nearly 30 years later for that to actually happen was just like, yes, you know, because I used to have terrible, terrible stage fright. Uh, and could so I've written songs since I was like 16, but never performed them anywhere because the thought of standing up in front of people just made me get like, oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I literally I couldn't hold the guitar because my hands would shake so much. Um, and then from doing kids books, I've kind of worked through that. And I get because of doing like events for, for schools and things. So I, I don't have those nerves. And now I'm able to play in bands and do that sort of thing. So that's why I was really proud of that. Uh, I would love to, I would like to hear about something that you have loved reading. I loved reading Diary of a Young Naturalist by Dara McNulty. Um, Dara is a young nature writer. Um, I believe he has just turned 18, but he was about 16 when he wrote this and published it. And it's his, his writing about um, his love of nature and walking and being in nature. He, he's Irish. Um, and I, I, I don't I never would have said I was someone who liked nature writing I love being in nature and I love experiencing nature and I, I think I sort of arrogantly thought well I don't need to read about it because I I enjoy it um in the flesh but um the way Dara writes is so moving and and so poignant and and also witty and warm and um and it really really changed my mind about nature writing <laughs> oh an issue you feel strongly about uh... I think it's kind of like fair, fairness and equality. So that's something that, that I feel really strongly about. And I feel like, you know, lots of people have a really difficult life for lots of reasons. Um, you know, whether it's to do with, you know, family wealth or, you know, family problems, you know, alcoholism, you know, and any, and there are thousands of different kind of things that can hold people back in life that don't get factored into the whole like if you work hard you can succeed kind of story yeah. um kind of like so we're that's... all we're all running a race but everyone has different starting lines yes. and so that's really cool that you said that that is kind of the ultimate empathy is empathy for people that we don't even know um and i think if you're going to be a person in charge you should have empathy more than hmm. anything else more than intelligence or wealth or any of these things I, we need people in charge to be empathetic i think yeah um but yeah i totally agree with that we could get onto a long conversation about that i think but um what's great about you guys is that whenever i go into schools i can just see how much this generation cares about fairness <laughs> and equality um and that's really cool is to see how, how how engaged everyone now is with um thinking about other people and thinking about society as a whole and not just yeah. as all of us as little individuals so yeah that's really cool right so uh Elle, i would like to hear about something that you feel strongly about <laughs> okay. well um i'm going to be very boring and and say the thing that everyone is bored of me saying and everyone knows that i'm going to say which is i'm, I'm very feel strongly about uh, disability representation. Uh, I'd love to see society and the world be a bit a bit better to disabled people and a little bit more uh, empathetic and a little bit more, um, a little bit less uh, infantilizing. And I know that when I go into schools and talk to you guys about this, a lot of you understand that because you are uh, disabled in some way, or maybe like me, you have a learning difficulty or you're autistic or whatever your disability is, sometimes people can be a bit infantilizing or they can be a little bit patronizing. And I, I'm very passionate about talking about these things and reminding everyone that we're just like other people, like everybody's humanity is worth the same just because we need different things or do different things. Um, so that's what I feel very strongly about. It's in all my books. It's, um, <laughs> it's not a secret. Um, and that's what I talk about when I come and see you guys at schools and you are always so empathetic. I mean, a lot of you are like me as well. And we, we talk about that. And, um, and then lots of you, um, you know, talk about how you've never thought about it before, but, you know, talking about it makes you put yourself in someone else's situation and understand it a bit. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to see more um, positive kind of disability representation in society um, and not people going like, oh, that's horrible or oh, like I never want to be like you or all, a lot of horrible things people say. I think people say a lot of things that are not very empathetic. Um, so I'd love if we could dial that down a bit and have less of that. <laughs> um, and we can only do that by, by uh, channeling our empathy and uh, learning about each other because everyone's different. So that's why I feel strongly about it. I mean, it's not a secret. Every, I think everyone who knows me knows that. 
Well, thanks so much for answering my questions, Tom. And uh, now it's your turn, you guys. If you want to get to know someone better, if you want to use those empathy tools, you can download these prompts and questions to start your own conversations at Empathy Lab. Dot uk uh, and you can have your very own empathetic conversations and learn more about other people yeah and when you do uh make sure that you share them uh online as part of the big share and tag at empathy lab uk and hashtag empathy day um so yeah that's it thanks for watching and i hope you have a great day bye everyone happy empathy day <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Rashmi and I'm the author of Good News, Why the World is Not as Bad as You Think, illustrated by Adam Hayes. Hello everyone, I'm James Mayhew. I'm the author and illustrator of Once Upon a June, uh, a collection of stories from the orchestra. Happy Empathy Day, everyone. Today, we are going to be taking part in the Empathy Superpower Challenge. And the challenge that we're going to be modeling and looking at is called Human Discoveries. And it's a really lovely challenge that you can do at home or in the classroom. And it's all about getting to know the other person. So um, let's have a go, let's start. I've got our questions here, which you can find in the resources. And I'm gonna ask James a question. All right. I'd like to hear about a story that helped you understand a real life situation. I do remember when I was very young at primary school, there was a, a boy in, in the school, he was in my class, he was fostered. And mm. I didn't understand fostering, I knew nothing about that world. Um, and around that time, my sister recommended to me Anne of Green Gables. And there'd been a TV series, so I knew a little bit about it. And I, and I read Anne of Green Gables, I loved it. I thought it was the most wonderful book. Um, and of course, I mean, she's not fostered, but she's um, an orphan. She ends up being adopted mm. by a childless brother and sister, an elderly brother and sister, Matthew Marilla Cuthbert. And at the beginning of the story, when she arrives, she, she's not wanted by anybody. And she arrives at this house and she's not wanted there either. And it really made me think about this boy in the class. I liked him and, and, and other people didn't. They, other people were quite unkind to him because he was fostered. And I think that book really made me think about what it must be like to feel not wanted and to feel that you don't belong somewhere or that you haven't got family. Um, I mm -hmm. found that quite um, a, a powerful story from that point of view. Well, what about you, Rashmi? Was there a book that you can think of that made you see uh, real life differently? One that I can think of off the top of my head is The Arrival by Sean Tan. And it's a wordless picture book, a graphic novel. Um, and before that book, I actually hadn't read wordless, you know, wordless graphic novels before. And it's all about the immigrant experience, going somewhere new, um, where things are unfamiliar and, and things are a little bit of a struggle. And it's just incredible how, how that story is told through the pictures. And I love this about, about books with pictures, that like, the writing tells part of the story and the the pictures tell part of the story and here it's it's all through that um but it, it was so eye-opening and i think it, it relates to so many different situations we come across in life whether you're moving to a new country a new town um because of war because of anything really i think there's so many things you can take from a book like that oh okay a tough one coming up i'd like to hear about something you found hard Oh, Rashmi, I find a lot of things in life hard. <laughs> you and me both, James. <laughs> um, I find coming up with ideas for stories hard. I find finishing the illustrations to a standard I'm happy with by the deadline hard. <laughs> um, I find com found coming out very hard. That's why mm. it took me 50 years to do it. Um, I think but I'm a worrier. I mean, that's my kind of default. I, I, I worry about things, I fret over things. I get things wrong. I make, I make a mess of things. I sometimes say things I shouldn't. Um, I, I, I sometimes, um, I'm sure I get on people's nerves sometimes. So I think just, just life in general, I, I, I do find it hard. But what about you? I mean, you, you come across as so accomplished and so talented and gifted and and uh, and confident. Um, what do you I find said, hard? I would have said all of those things about you. And actually, I'm going to give you a high five across the screen because I'm a fellow warrior. 
Rashmi, I want to hear about something that has made you really happy. Do you know, I'm going to go with something really small because sometimes for me, it's the small, the little things that, that make the biggest difference. And my kids love to sing. They're six and seven and they'll sing along to music if we play it. And the other day we were in the car and we were just singing along to Sunflower from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And we're just singing at the top of our lungs, not very well, that's me anyway, they're, they're okay. Um, but we were just having the best time, nothing mattered. It didn't matter that we were off tune, garbled the words sometimes, we were just having fun. And in that moment, I felt really happy. Okay, I'd like to hear something that you feel strongly about. Human rights, I would mm. say. I, I feel very strongly about LGBTQ rights, obviously, um, mm. but all uh, um, minority groups and the representation of them. I think that's what, what I feel, particularly within my field of work, um, mm -hmm. within publishing, because I feel that uh, we are turning a corner very slowly, but we are making progress. I celebrate that progress, but I also mm -hmm. recognise that we need a, a lot more. Um, yep. So that's something I feel very strongly about. Oh, well, I can't top that. And I agree with you and nodding along to all of that. Um, I'm going to go with something bookish um, for me. I feel really strongly that all great books are great books and that there is something out there for someone. I know that for everyone, I know that some people feel that Funny books are not as good as other books, more sophisticated literary books, um, or audio books are not books, or comic books are not books, or picture books are just for little children and all of these things. And I just think nonfiction as well, people talking about it as a gateway into reading, but then you read the real books, the fiction. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just, I'll just take all of that, scrunch it up and chuck it in the bin because all great books are books and if you love something something makes you laugh makes you feel something makes you think makes you dream it's a great book now it's your turn to get to know someone else better and share what you're doing as part of the big share tagging at empathy lab uk and using the hashtag empathy day um, that's all from us happy empathy day happy empathy day everybody Good luck with your own challenges. Uh, have fun. Take time to get to know people a bit better. Ask them some interesting questions and, uh, and have a go answering them yourself. You might even get to know yourself a bit better in the process. <laughs>